One of the reasons I decided to do research with the research team was because it's going to inform my business. Stone grabbing is a sustainable industry in the Bahamas. And if we go about doing it the proper way, it'll make sure that the, the fishery will be viable for many, many, many years. So I don't think that is something where, you know, we should just be harvesting the, the claws and just utilizing them and destroying the crab in the process. One of the reasons I only use the stick it method for uh, harvesting crab claws is because I just find it is much easier for me. Force break, I found for me, was a little bit more difficult to do without plugging the crab or like potentially harming the crab. I think it was important to do research with the research team to understand how this new method aids in terms of the movement and just the overall behavior of the crab in general. Ultimately, these crabs are able to produce multiple claws over multiple seasons, unlike a lobster or a conch. So I would say use any method that you can to create longevity inside the species, right? Here today and, you know, go on tomorrow, basically. So. Uh, when I go with the research team, uh, what we do is we usually go along the various lines of uh, stone crab traps that we have, and we pull up each trap, and we empty the traps of all its contents, and we bait it back up, and then we usually declaw all of the, the um, legal size crab claws. Using the bait knife right here, and simply inserting into that soft membrane right there, and just a little pressure, and the, the crab automatically releases the claw. We have been measuring the, the back of the crab, as well as the claw, and we've been doing a very extensive tagging process so that we can keep track of crabs that we've caught before as well as crabs that we've put through the various processes either using the autotomy or the force break process. Here we have a stone crab that we've tagged and according to our tag here which is 465 it's an indicator that we would have caught in this crab at least nine months ago. Um, as you can see that uh, it, uh, it has two claws that have already started to regrow within that nine month span. Right, so as you can see, this tagging process is a really good initiative to document and follow and see what it is that we would have captured and how long it actually takes these stone crab to, to grow their claws back. Okay, so here we have another stone, um, stone crab that we would have caught in our trap. That's been a part of our tagging process. And according to the number, this one has also been down for a considerable amount of time, I would say about maybe eight months. Um, but as you can see, the difference between this particular crab and the one before is this one has only regrown one claw thus far. Uh, just showing how, I mean, it's really, it doesn't really matter for how long the crab was down, it depends on the crab itself um, and its ability to regrow its claws. The whole process of going through the, the, the process of the research team itself, I mean, that has been very informative for me going out and just understanding the movement of the crab uh, with regards to some of them moving up to a quarter of a mile within you know a week span as well as having some of them move up to two miles you know over the course of a, of a whole season. The best way to cook and eat stone crab is fresh as soon as you catch it just cook it cook it to uh, the perfect temperature and chill it and eat it just like that. The research has shown that utilizing the stick it method has definitely increased crab survival. Um, so I would say Bahamas, don't clip it, stick it.